Hey there, and thanks for watching. So, you know, over my career, I've encountered a range of complex scenarios that traditional metrics often don't capture accurately. And one that's been top of mind for me is the equity multiple, uh, a metric that helps us understand the investment performance or the growth in capital over a whole period. So for instance, investor puts a dollar into an investment, that dollar grows to $1.50, the equity multiple is 1.5 over one or a 1.5 equity multiple. Now, typically, or the way in which in our accelerator program, we teach calculating the traditional equity multiple is you sum up all capital inflows that arrives at what some refer to as peak equity or peak capital. And we divide that by the absolute value of all capital outflows. And it's a very simple way of calculating equity multiple. It uses the net cash flow line, either unlevered or levered, and out you get the traditional equity multiple. The problem is that this methodology Really, any, any of the typical methodologies for calculating equity multiple, and there are a couple, none of them account for or properly account for a mid-hold capital event, say a partial sale, a cash out refi, maybe a post-close debt placement. All of these traditional methodologies for calculating equity multiple are misleading. And so this real-world conundrum has led me to create a metric and perhaps you use a similar metric to solve for this conundrum. I haven't run into it though. And so I'm calling it the weighted equity multiple. And over the next few minutes, I'm gonna share how I calculate this weighted equity multiple and why I think it is an elegant solution to this real world problem. Now, first let's understand what equity multiple is. Uh, it's sometimes referred to as the multiple on invested capital or the MOIC. It's in essence a key return metric, again, that that describes, that illustrates an investor's capital growth. Again, dollar in becomes a dollar fifty, you one five zero multiple. Now, uh, the weighted equity multiple, in essence, accomplishes the same thing, but it accounts for a variation in peak capital over your hold period. The formula is quite simple. It is equal to the sum of total project cost, I'm, I'm sorry, total project profit and weighted capital invested divided by weighted capital invested. And if you think about the formula for equity, the traditional formula for equity multiple, it's in essence project profit plus capital invested divided by capital invested. And what we're doing here is we're, instead of capital invested, we're taking the weighted capital investment over the whole period with the pre-event, that mid-hold uh, mid capital event, and post-mid-hold capital event. And we're using those periods as the weights to arrive at our weighted capital invested. Now here, and also in the, the blog post that accompanies this video, I've described how to calculate the weighted capital invested, which is really the key uh, calculation in this formula. And once you do that, the weighted equity multiple is quite simple to calculate. Now, what you're looking at in front of you are two scenarios. The first scenario is a scenario in which an investor purchases a property for 10 million, all cash, but one year later puts 5 million of permanent debt on the property and then holds the property for a total of 60 months, 12 months unlevered, uh, uh, 48 months levered. And so what you have is pre-event, 10 million of capital invested, post-event, and that event is the refinance, 5 million of capital invested, right? Because the investor gets 5 million back. Oh, and then by the way, that investor gets 5 million back, and what do they do with it? Undoubtedly, they put it in some other investment, whether it's a bank account that earns interest or in, in another real estate investment. Whatever it may be, that investor will be earning some multiple on that return capital. And so in my view, using the traditional equity multiple is not a fair way of thinking about an investment such as this, where you have one year of unlevered and four years of, of levered cash flow. And so the calculation goes pre-event peak capital, 10 million with a pre-event period of one year, post-event peak capital of 5 million with your post-event period being four years. And when we take the weighted average of those two, you get a weighted capital invested of 6 million. Now then I run 
operating cash flow, reversion cash flow. We get our unlevered cash flow line and our levered cash flow line. And you see on an unlevered basis, this investment produces a 12.8% unlevered IRR and a 164 equity multiple. Net profit is 6.4 million. Now, when we add the debt component, as I described, one year in, we put a $5 million loan on the property and we hold it until the end of year five, where we pay that loan off with $10 million sale. You get a net profit levered, inclusive of, of this debt of 5 million. That results in an IRR of 16.18, right? So we have some positive leverage because our borrowing rate is below our unlevered IRR. But if we use the traditional equity multiple here, what you get is a 1-5 multiple. Well, that doesn't make any sense because we have some leverage. So why would that erode? Well, the erosion is because this is assuming a peak capital of 10 million. That peak, peak capital of 10 million only happens for a year. After that, you have peak capital, what? 5 million. So when we weight those two, you get 6 million. And when we use this weighted equity multiple calculation, we get a 1-8-3 which again now is more practical. Uh, you see some leverage, uh, some effective leverage, both in your IRR, but also in your equity multiple. Now scenario two is uh, a bit more complex, but also a common scenario, right? So in this scenario, investor purchases a property, say for 10 million, uh, maybe the property has existing debt. So assuming a $5 million loan, or maybe they, the, the investor puts a $5 million bridge loan on. In this case here, this $5 million loan has an interest rate of 7%. And the investor said, I'm going to put a three-year fixed rate loan. I think interest rates are going down over the next three years. And so at the end of year three, investor refinances with a larger loan as uh, in NOI has grown, rates have dropped. The new loan is $8 million. And so the investor is able to take $3 million cash out. And the result is for at the remaining seven years of a 10 year hold, the investor only has 2 million of capital in. And so you take the weight of 5 million of capital for the th first three years, 2 million of capital invested for the last seven years. You get a weighted capital invested of 2.9. Again, 5 million of net profit in this particular scenario, 10 year hold, and you get 788 unlevered IRR and a 189 traditional equity multiple unlevered. But when we take the levered again, you see the effect of leverage in your IRR, but in your traditional equity multiple, that effect is muted again, because it, the calculations based on the initial capital and not necessarily the weight. When we use the weighted equity multiple, you get 272, much more practical, much more uh, realistic given seven years, you actually have far less capital invested in the project. So that is the weighted equity multiple metric. Let me know if you have any questions, comments about this. Again, I haven't seen anyone introduce this. I, I assume that others are using something similar to this to solve for this conundrum. Love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, or if you have any questions about it, shoot us an email, happy to respond. Otherwise, thanks for your time. Thank you.